Yes, welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. We have got a lot to get through today. Eze, according to some reports, wants a move to Tottenham. Other reports coming out saying he desperately wants to move away. Tottenham, according to Football London, are prepared to spend £118 million on three transfers. Archie Gray is fully coys. Joe Roden signs for Leeds United. We've got a massive transfer update. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you go down. As always, drop a like on the video. We hit nearly a 1,000 likes on yesterday's video. If we get it 500 today, that would be absolutely amazing. 61% of all the people that watched the channel yesterday were not subscribed. So make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button. The road to 24K is well and truly on. Now, the club in the last hour or so have announced the on the socials of the likes of Archie Gray, which I think I think is going to be a fantastic signing for us. I really do. I look at what he can add in midfield, the fact that he can play right back as well, and he's our number fourteen, which. If you, if you think your mind back to a, a while ago, there was a certain Croatian midfielder that was number 14. And there he is, our new number 14, Archie Gray. I can't believe he was born in 2006. That's just insane. There he is. He is fully coys. That is announced. And the club have also announced that Joe Roden has joined Leeds on a permanent transfer. You know, wishing all the best of the future. Hope he does well. Hope Lee's come back up to the Premiership. But there you go. So that is so far this transfer window. That he's an 18-year-old who has got bundles of talent and a bright future signed from Leeds United for around 30 to 40 million pounds. That's Jaffet Tanganga has joined Millwall. Obviously, Perisic has left. Dyer has left. Undon Bele and Ryan Session have had their contracts ripped up. And according to Football London, another six to eight players could still go. And those sort of names are Emerson Royale, who's strongly linked to a move to AC Milan. The likes of Manwar Solomon and the likes of Brian Hill. Hoiberg, Lo Celso. There's, there's a lot of players that could still leave this football club in, in due course time. But look, so far, I think it's a very, very positive start to the window. And Langer, according to... The Athletic was in daily contact with Archie Gray's camp for weeks as Tottenham pursued the transfer, pushing to get it done. And now Johan Langer's next target, according to reports, is Jacob Ramsey. Now, one, one thought I've, I've naturally got now, the fact that Jacob Ramsey is on the radar, is obviously the Conor Gallagher situation, according to Dan Kilpatrick. Probably is not going to happen now. Um, David Ornstein has come out to say that Archie Gray um, will be a midfielder despite his versatility. So now I've got a, I've got a p potential scenario here. Archie Gray will replace Giovanni Lo Celso, or Archie Gray will replace Hoiberg, and Jacob Ramsey will replace Giovanni Lo Celso, which means next season. The eights could be Benton Core, Jacob Ramsey, Saar, Bergval. The sixes could be Gray and Bissouma and potentially Saar. And the 10 would be, hopefully, Eze slash Madison. That midfield has a lot more balance because there's different profiles in there than a Hoiberg, La Celso, Benton Core, Bissouma and Saar. I think the midfield, adding the likes of Archie Gray and Jacob Ramsey, gives us a lot more balance. Plus, because of his versatility, he can also give cover to the likes of Pedro Porro. Another right back who is being heavily linked with Tottenham at the moment. And according to sources yesterday, that Tottenham still are interested in the likes of... Kyle Walker-Peters. Uh, Dan Kilpatrick essentially put out this yesterday from Tottenham Tears that 
Now, Conor Gallagher, uh, according to Dan Kilpatrick, the interest is expected to call now that yesterday's June 30th financial deadline has passed. Though the England international remains in his final year of his contract, which means a bid is not completely off the table. And it's not completely off the table, but as it stands right now, I don't, I don't think personally he's going to leave Chelsea. I think, I think he'll probably sign a new contract. You know, they've just brought in the likes of Dewsbury Hall. That's been announced. He's also plays a very similar role to Conor Gallagher. I don't think Conor Gallagher's actually been that bad for England. I think he's given us bundles of energy during the Euros when he's come off the bench. But in terms of Tottenham, I don't think we'll sign him now. Now that we're looking at Jacob Ramsey with Johan Langer's links to the Aston Villa midfielder, I think it makes a lot more sense us bringing in Jacob Ramsey, who's, you know, okay, he's roughly the same age as Conor Gallagher, but overall, he's probably more chance of Aston Villa selling than, than Chelsea. Now, Archie Gray, um, you know, Archie Gray said on Ange Postacoglu, I'm not going to lie, I'm a massive, massive Celtic fan. So he's looking forward to, to working with him. He, Archie Gray is going to be happy of the amount of game time that he's been assured. So he looks like, you know, he's going to get a, a, a big, big role next season, you know, and I, just, I hope, hope, well, hopefully it works out for, for Tottenham because there's, there's a bundle of talent there. DiMaggio come out yesterday saying Milan will meet with Tottenham this week to discuss a deal for Emerson Royale. If we can get around £20 million for him or €18 million, Euros, what the fee is, um, I think Milan will be a good move for him. You know, they're constantly fighting for Scudettos. They can offer him Champions League football next season. He probably fits the Italian style of play more. It's a little bit slower. Fullbacks genuinely are a lot more attacking over there. You've got the likes of Teo Hernandez the likes of DiMarco, you know, you think back to the Juve years of Juan Cuadrado as well. I think he'll kind of fit that more time on the ball. He's not a bad player. I just don't necessarily think he's as good as Pedro Porro. And I think for Emerson Royal, he wants first team football. And I think he should reignite his career in Italy. And, and like Royal said the other day, they've got a good track record when it comes to linked with Brazilians. Alexander Pato, Ronaldinho, Robinho, you know, that Thiago Silva, they've had some great Brazilian, you know, Cafu, they've had some great Brazilians, Dida, throughout the years. So hopefully he can go and re he reignite his career there. And I want to get through an article uh, coming out from Football London. And it says Tottenham finally receive green light for £118 million transfers. Um, and Postacoglu targets three signings. Now, this is going to be an interesting one because now we've just brought through the likes of Archie Gray and this report came out yesterday at 7 p.m. It's going to be interesting to see who we, you know, the report essentially says, um, as it stands right now, Hoiberg and Emerson Royale, I'll bring out the report in a second, Emerson Royale and Hoiberg are the two most likely to leave once the Copa America and Euros are over. Now, Brazil play tonight, and they've not got an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. They are against Colombia, who are a very, very good side. And if, for whatever reason, if Brazil were to lose, they would, they'd have a tough game in the um quarterfinals which would either be against um Uruguay I think I think they'd be playing Uruguay now Uruguay as it stands I think have scored the most goals in the competition I think they've scored uh yeah they've scored nine goals they're absolutely flying they've only conceded one you know they beat the, the US last night they put five goals past uh Bolivia and they put three goals past Panama on the opening game of the tournament. So Brazil are going to have their, are going to have their, you know, they're going to be tested. That's not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. And that game will is scheduled to be played uh, on Sunday. So they may even be out by Sunday. I don't think personally they're going to beat Uruguay, which means we, we, we could actually hypothetically cash in ASAP. Now, 
Spurs value Hoiberg around 25 million pounds. He's got interest from Atletico Madrid and from Napoli. And former manager Antonio Conte is interested in him. But the article um, speaks about um, some players. And it says, Stad Rene's midfielder, Desiree Dube, is a name that keeps coming up. And it says, Stad Rene's midfielder, Desiree Dube, has been linked to a Premier League move with Tottenham and Arsenal, the two teams mentioned. Following an excellent breakout season in France, the 19-year-old has been given a 40 million euro price tag, which is 33.9 million pounds, placed on his shoulders, while Postacoglu is aiming to build a young and exciting team, signing the 19-year-old will be a sensational coup. Um, though the Spurs boss seems to favour signing talent for the future, he is clearly not bringing in against more experienced players if they fit his ethos with Lille's striker, Jonathan David, emerging for a target. Now, one thing that's interesting to me is everyone's been talking about how great the likes of Santiago Jimenez is. He is yet to score. You know, he is yet to score at the Copa America. And as it stands, Mexico did not get out of the group as it stands. Whereas Canada, Jonathan David, they are in the quarterfinals. And Jonathan David did get on the score sheet against Peru in a 1-0 win. So everyone that was saying to me, Santiago Jimenez is miles better, Henry. You need to... You need to watch him. Jonathan David is absolutely, you know, he's not very good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, he's proved that he is a good player because he has scored on an international stage for Canada, you know, and he has progressed them into the next round and they will face Venezuela on Saturday. And you would fancy Canada to get past Venezuela. You know, Venezuela are a relatively good team. They put three goals past Jamaica. They did beat Mexico 1-0. But so far, we have seen an absolute disaster class coming out from, um, from Santiago Jimenez and Mexico. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that. So, Desiree Dué, let's speak on him before we get to Jonathan David and the rest of the article. You know, as it stands right now, I'm 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 a fan. I'm a fan of both Desiree Dué and of Jonathan David. And if we could get both of these done, then I I would be over the moon with that. He's 19 years of age, left winger, both footed, can play on the left, can play on the right. He can also play as a number 10. He will be going to the Olympics um, but with France under Thierry Henry. Contract expires June 30th, 2026. He last signed the contract uh, August 7th, 2023. His stats overall last season, he, he has played um, his career stats. He's got 90 games, nine goals and eight assists. He's come through Renee's academy. And now he's gone all the way up to the first team. And last season, um, I think he played, and I think he played 30, was it 35 games? I think he played in uh, in all comps, maybe more. If we look at his, uh, yeah, so he, he had a he had a relatively good season. And if you look at the numbers in terms of he's played 15 games at left wing, four games at right wing, eight games at um, attacking mid, 10 games at centre mid, one game at left mid, three games at right mid, two games as a centre forward and one game as a second striker. So he is very, very, very versatile. Played 43 games last season, 31 in the league, four goals and five assists. So it's a relatively good return for a 19-year-old. He got 10 GA in 43 games. Um, does have Europa League experience. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. If we could get rid of the likes of Manuel Solomon and Brian Hill for around 20 million euro combined and you, and you put 30 million euro down on a player like this who has got experience in the Europa League, has got better GA than both Solomon and Brian Hill combined. Probably a better player than Timo Werner as well. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big, big fan. I think he could um could definitely be a top target for us. It's just about, can we, you know, this £118 million, if we could spend around 30, what was it, 40 million euro on him, 33.9 million. I think 
you know, that that'd be a good signing for us. But we also do need to look at getting rid of some more players as well. His stats in terms of the numbers are, you know, they're, they're very, very, very good. He's in the top one. This is against midfielders. He's in the top 1% for progressive passes, successful take-ons, touching the attacking penalty area, blocks. You know, the, the numbers are very, very, very good. And if you look on the right-hand side, he's compared to the likes of Ryan Gravenberch, Harvey Elliott, Dominic Sobers, like Jonathan Bamba, Bernardo Silva. Like there's some, there's some brilliant numbers there um, for us. So I'm all for that. And Jonathan David, you know, I, I've expressed my opinion a number of times in him, and I do think he would be uh, a good signing for us. We just need to, you know, make sure that make sure that we're we're essentially. essentially got the right plan for the remainder of the window. We've started brilliantly, getting rid of a couple of players. Desiree Due for me would, would be a great signing, as well as Jonathan David. If, apparently, you can pick Jonathan, da the 24-year-old has been contacted by Chelsea, along with interest from Tottenham, and it is likely he will leave France this summer um, as his contract expires next summer. A bargain deal could be struck worth £20 million. Pounds. You know, that that is a, a, a very, very, very good um, signing for that for that amount. Now, there's a report coming out from an ITK that the likes of Eze um, is, as it stands, open and willing to leave Crystal Palace this summer. And as it stands right now, he wants to move. You know, he hasn't had a huge amount of game time in the England set up during the Euros. The fee, of course, is that release clause, which is £60 million. We've already spent £30 million on on Gray. We've got £10 million back, so we're at, you know, £20 million net. Could we go out and, and break the bank on an Eze? I think my ideal transfer window as it stands would be Gray, Ramsey, Eze, a forward, and a... Fullback. Now, one of the fullbacks we mentioned is Kyle Walker Peters. We'll come to him shortly. And then you get 20 million for Hoiberg. And you bring in Jonathan David as well. 20 million for Hoiberg. 15 million for Lacelso. So that's 35 million. 10 million for Roden. 45 million. And 25 million probably for Solomon and Brian Hill combined. That's what? 35, 45. That's 70 million overall. And then you drop 20 million on David. 60 million on Eze, 30 million on Gray. So that's um, 60, that's 110. And then you do 30 million on Ramsey, that's 140. And then you do another 20 million on, uh, on a fullback who can play both left and right, or maybe bring in another attacker. And you're looking at a net of around 120 million, which is what the reported fee has been for a long time in terms of our overall expenditure. So look, it's a great start for the window for me. As it stands, Eze wants the move. No other team really, and I, I know there's reports coming out that Arsenal were interested and whatnot, but no other team as it stands right now is that interested as, as, as much as we are. Can we go and get it done? Hopefully. I, I, I do think that in the next... You know, three or four weeks, once England are out of the Euros and the Copa America starts, Eze will probably, for me, start pushing that move. You know, we've got some games this month as well, which is worth uh, speaking about as well. Tottenham do have three games this month, playing QPR in 18 days. Hearts, um, we're actually playing Hearts in um, 15 days. We play Hearts, 7 o'clock kickoff, three days later, QPR. Then we've got, we've actually got four games this month. Then we've got Vissel Kobe 27th of July and the K-League uh, 11 on the, um, at midday on the 31st of July. So Tottenham have got four games this month, pre-season, first game of pre-season gets underway on the 17th um, of July, which is against Hearts. So it's important that we we, we have a good start to the pre-season. We've got more games than last time. We've got Bayern Munich twice. 
So that would be a good test to see where we are. Of course, they, they, they've just announced, uh, well, they're about to know that Xavi Simons and the likes of Elise has already joined with Paulinha as well on their radar. Let me know your thoughts down below if you haven't already. Make sure you drop a like on the video. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching. I am out.